All right, everybody, I just wanted to briefly review the plasma membrane with y'all. So remember the plasma membrane is the outer part of the cell, basically the city limits uh, of a city. So here's the plasma membrane. Here are a few structures and functions. All right, the cell membrane's functions, protection, communication, selectively allow substances in. Hopefully you know what the word selectively means. We're, that's going to come up later. Uh, just think if you are selecting uh, something, you're picking whether or not you want it or not, right? Uh, you're selecting it. It responds to the environment and also helps in recognition. All right, here are a few things you need to know about the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is made up of these small structures called phospholipids. So we know that they are a type of lipid from their name and that they have a phosphate group. That's the two parts of the name put together right there. Uh, starting at the top, pl the plasma membrane is another name for the cell membrane. They're pretty much used interchangeably. So you can say plasma membrane or cell membrane, either one is acceptable. Basically, it's the boundary that separates the living environment from the non-living environment around it. So it separates the cell from the rest of the world. The cell membrane is made up of a phospholipid bilayer. So it's going to be two layers of these. Basically, here would be one part. And then underneath it would be another head, and then the tails towards the inside. You'd have two layers of uh, these structures basically facing in opposite directions. Bi means two, so it's two layers of these phospholipids. Okay, here's a few things you need to know about the phospholipids. They have a polar head, which means the head, the phosphate group up here, has a charge to it. All right. They are hydrophilic. They are hydrophilic, sorry, uh, meaning they love water. Philic, this uh, root word right here means to love. These are water loving. The tails are nonpolar. They do not have a charge. They are called hydrophobic. So you've probably seen this word before. Um, someone might be claustrophobic or have arachnophobia, which means they don't like something. They're scared of something. Hydrophobic, these tails of the phospholipids basically fear water. They don't like water very much. Uh, they're always going to be pointing away from the water. That's why the tails are always on the inside of that phospholipid bilayer but the tails are made up of a fatty acid, okay? Here are some more things you need. Okay, so this picture is pretty random, right? It's a polar bear with his head underwater. You can kind of see the guy who was taking the picture right here. But anyway, I, I picked this picture. It's a polar bear's head in water. This is to help you remember that the heads of those phospholipids are polar, like a polar bear, and that they love water. Okay, so if you can remember this picture, you already know a lot of things about that structure that you need to remember. Okay, the phospholipid head, the phosphate group is polar, like a polar bear's head, and they love water. So this polar bear is underneath some water. If you can remember this picture, that's everything you need to know about that. Okay, so why do the cells even need to, why do they need to be selectively permeable? Why, why do we need certain things inside of the cell and keep certain things out? Well, the cells are kind of like you, okay? They need, sometimes they need more water. Sometimes they need more energy in the form of glucose. Um, but then also we need to get things out of the cell, right? Um, just the same way you would need to go use the bathroom when you have material in your body that you don't need anymore, the cell has to do that same thing. Okay, so cells maintain a balance by controlling what comes in and out of the cell. The same way you maintain a balance in between hunger and thirst by drinking and eating water, cells are doing the same things. 
Okay, we need to know what this term is right here, homeostasis. Okay, remember, uh, homo is a term that means the same. Stasis is a condition of. So this is basically a condition of keeping things similar, okay? Uh, organisms, cells, anything that's alive is going to need to maintain homeostasis, which is a dynamic internal environment. Okay, there's plenty of examples of this, okay? Imagine your mouth is getting dry, you're getting a little thirsty, what would you do in that situation? Well, you would obviously go get something to drink. That's going to help uh, you maintain your homeostasis. You have a certain amount of water that you need in your cells. Uh, drinking that water is going to help you keep that water level where it's supposed to be. Another example of this is you might be sitting in my classroom right now cold, if you were cold, you would maybe grab a blanket and pull it around you. That's going to warm you up. That's going to get your body temperature back up to where it needs to be. But homeostasis is just a dynamic internal environment. I have this word in uh, dynamic because it's always sort of changing, right? You won't. Uh, you need a certain amount of water in your body, but it might be different throughout the day. But it's always close to that uh, set point of how much you need. And uh, cells must maintain internal concentrations of water, glucose, and other nutrients. And they must also eliminate the waste products that they don't need. So a few reasons that cells need to be selectively permeable. It's going to let water and glucose in um, very frequently and try to keep the things that it doesn't need out of the cell. So how do cells control this transport. Well, here are a few ways. The cell membrane helps maintain homeostasis by allowing some things in and keeping some things out. This is this quality of being able to pick what comes in and out is called selectively permeable. So selectively, imagine you're at the grocery store, you're at an aisle, the cereal aisle, where you're going to pick the cereal that you need or that you want and not pick the cereal that you don't want. Uh, you're selecting the cereal that you want. In the same way, the cell is going to pick what it needs and what it wants and only keep those things in the cell and keep everything out of the cell. Permeable, uh, think of the word porous. Basically, uh, some things are going to be able to move through the cell membrane easier than others. That's what this permeable, permeable part means. But basically, the cell is just deciding what it wants and what it doesn't want. That ability is called selectively permeable. It allows different cells to carry on different activities within the same organism. And cell membranes may, or sorry, have many proteins embedded in them that help with cellular transport. So here's uh, what that might look like. Here's kind of a cut scene of the cell membrane as well as some of the structures that we're going to see in here. Okay, so these are those phospholipids. Notice how there's two layers of them, right? This is why we call it a phospholipid bilayer. Okay, phospholipids and there's two layers. Remember the heads are polar and that they love water much like that picture that I showed you. The tails hate water. So they they're pointing in towards each other. There's no water in this layer. All the water is out here and out here. Um, these are the tails are hydrophilic. Or sorry, the tails of the phospholipids are hydrophobic. Uh, phobic means to fear something. They hate the water, so they're trying to stay away from the water. Also in the, this is called the fluid, fluid mosaic model. Think of a mosaic means that's those things that you rip up the construction paper and you glue them all back in these different ways and when you look uh, from really far away you can see an image um, emerging. The reason we call it the fluid, fluid mosaic model is because it's made up of, of a lot of different things coming together to make one uh, thing which is the cell membrane. Okay some more structures that we see in here uh, you'll see small amounts of cholesterol embedded in the membrane. That just gives the membrane some extra strength and support. 
We'll also see proteins embedded in the cell membrane, the plasma membrane. This is going to, some molecules are small enough to pass straight from outside of the cell and inside of the cell. That would be like oxygen can just move straight through. Other molecules like glucose are too big to move straight through here. So they'll take the protein instead. It's kind of like a bridge. If you see proteins just on the outside of the cell, these are going to be surface proteins. See how they're only on one side of the cell membrane towards the surface, so those are called surface proteins. 